Hello and welcome to today's live session with uh, Rebel Fitness and Erudite Nutrition. Today we will be discussing a little bit about uh, the food pyramid, what was the historical research behind it and uh, what is the current state, what are the pros, what are the cons and whether you should be following this food pyramid or not. Uh, this is a matter concerning public health and we will be joined by Kanwaldeep who should be here at any moment. Uh, we are just waiting for him. Once he's on, we shall start this session. So to tell you a little bit about the food pyramid, uh, historically there was a very famous study called the Ansel Key study. Uh, this study was uh, done by a researcher Ansel Keys who was quite influential in the United States. So let me add Convaldi. He's joining us. Just having some technical issues in adding current green color. Somebody who pissed in the podcast. Kanwaldeep, are you able to receive my invite? Oh, there you are. Finally, we have it. Raji, good evening, everyone. Good evening, viewers. How are you all doing? Are you ready for today's uh, session, a myth busting session on nutrition <laughs> in association with Kanwal Deep, who has been studying the food pyramid for a while and has given a talk about it? So, Kanwaldeep, I was just telling our viewers about Ansel Keys. Do you want to yes. talk a little bit about Ansel Keys and uh, what are your thoughts on his historic study which led to the food pyramid? Uh, see, Dr. Ansel Keys, he was, uh, he was a very hardworking guy, to be honest. And he really did took up some, you know, massive tasks in terms of uh, nutrition evaluation. Yeah. The guy was knowledgeable in many trades. Uh, but there was this one particular incident that we are going to discuss when he actually uh, did that seven country study. And uh, to tell you all the viewers that Ansel Key is actually... Uh, ex just excuse me for a while. I'm actually setting up my camera. Just give me a minute. Sure. Yeah. All right. It's done. Yeah. So, uh, Ansel Key was uh, the guy behind this whole cholesterol issue, the, mm -hmm. the lipid, uh, lipid fearing diet or the cholesterol fearing diet. Basically, he was the uh, main reason uh, why the American Heart Association and uh, majority of the health guidelines, uh, the USDA, everybody was influenced by his study. But his study was massive. Uh, his study was actually... It's still ongoing, impressive. I believe. It's, it's one of the studies which is being done such a long time. It's still ongoing. Yeah, it, it, it is. So, basically what, what the study was actually, uh, he studied about the consumption of fats as per a country mm -hmm. and uh, the number of heart diseases 
in the general population mm -hmm. and uh, basically he did a study on 22 country okay so the studies populate uh, is popularized as seven country studies because the end at the end the data that was presented that was only about the seven countries but in reality he conducted this study on in 22 different countries but the only one thing that he did wrong was to maybe there could be any reason maybe he was under pressure or he wanted to make an impact he wanted mm -hmm. to make a, a distinguished identity for himself or uh, later on maybe he also went on the cover pick of times magazine so maybe that could also be a motivation but he eliminated the 15 countries which did not show results according to his hypothesis. Yes. So, 7 out of 22 countries which actually showed that the higher the amount of fat consumption in your diet, the more heart diseases you get. Yes. So, he only Heart diseases, on... obesity, hypertension, all of them. Huh. So, so, basically, he just focused on that. And he didn't actually mention about the rest of the 15 countries. So even if you take the total sample size of the study, he just published one third part of the study. Okay. And around that particular study, this whole uh, dietary guidelines has been built. And uh, the fat fearing, the, the cholesterol is a bad thing, kind of a myth. And yeah. uh, all, all these all these things and this actually this actually gave rise to the industrialization of modern food that we are the, the, the so called food that we call right now yes and just to let our viewers know if uh, what kanwaldeep is mentioning about uh, cholesterol fearing please remember that cholesterol is essential for your body your cells yes. need cholesterol and 80% of all cholesterol in your body is manufactured by your liver. So even if you don't eat anything, you still will have cholesterol in your blood because your cells need it. So don't be yes. panicky about cholesterol or don't get swayed that this food is cholesterol free or that food has cholesterol. Don't get swayed by it. So now um, let's uh, go on to some of the analysis of the study. They, one of the main chief recommendations was the base of your diet should be carbohydrates carbohydrate yes and followed by food fruits and veg and then meat and dairy but one thing i would say even back then dr anselki's got right was sugar was at the top of the pyramid so sugar yes, consumption sir. he said should be next to nothing where he went wrong was fat and fat is essential for everybody but for men it is even a little bit more important Yes. Okay. So now, Kanwaldi, coming to, I have a, a question on this. Uh, have you come across any food pyramid recommendations in India? Because I have come across a few, even if you go to some of the medical websites and uh, insurance company mm -hmm. websites, uh, there they have some very strange recommendations where the bottom carbohydrate part is the same. And then they have put a mixture of veg, fruits, legumes, nuts. And then they have come to vegetable oils as something that one should consume daily. Then they have gone on to milk and fish, which should be, which is optional on a daily basis. And then they mm -hmm. have reduced it to eggs and chicken. And mm -hmm. sweets and meat have gone on top. So what do you have to say about this kind of observation? It is very similar, uh, but not exactly the same. Yeah, the, the, the Indian food uh, pyramid the, that is actually a little bit modified hmm. from what was proposed by uh, the United States. So uh, basically, again, the, the main source of uh, the major source of anybody's diet, it is always the staple foods that are available. Yes. Because staple foods are easy to uh, store, they are available, they are cheap. So uh, when we talk about India, especially uh, our country, so the staple food is rice, corn, wheat. So 
and they are after the green revolution when when the rice and uh, wheat production it you know exponentially uh, grew so we actually had a surplus of grain yeah and that was the that was the same problem with the america also but the same thing repeated in india also we had a surplus of grains and so that they do not spoil and they do not go to a waste a lot lot of processing units were actually uh, started many of the bread industries and the biscuit bakery industry basically it just started on so the the reason they have always kept this carbohydrate rich diet in in maximum serving is because we actually have a surplus of grain okay and if if we if we compare the amount of grains uh that are that are harvested every year to the amount of pulses and lentils there is a huge gap yes the, because and we still if, pulses, if, if we import some, most of our pulses and lentils i believe yes right so we have a surplus of grains and cereals but we do not have uh, enough pulses so uh, the price comes in the factor and also see the government has to Uh, implement some policies, and they have to motivate. If if hmm. they want you uh, to particularly consume a particular thing, then they have to motivate motivate you. And they have got this media, hmm. they've got doctors, and they've got this national uh, missions, and so forth. So what we what we can essentially conclude is the study was done in a way to benefit the food industry or what the so called food industry. because they knew that there was yes. a processing revolution or technological development that had happened which could lead to a much larger production of grains i mean exactly. I, if i am not wrong earlier we used to read about all uh, fallow land and arable land three times crop those things went out of the way like things were harvested throughout the year 24 by 7 so to oh, sorry so It, yeah also also to be taken into consideration is that before the green revolution hmm. there were there was no bakery industry in our country not up to this level like no okay all this bakery industry and bakery goods and all this see uh, in terms of a toast what people used to have in the 70s hmm. was the chapati from last night yes in in the next morning with a cup of milk or tea okay so bread bread ho gaya ya uh, all these buns and these things were not available so all these things came after uh, the 1970s when we actually had surplus of grains and also uh, we should know that when these grains when when we increased our harvest when we increased mm. our total yield uh, the high yield variety of grains were used especially yes. in case of wheat mm. so that wheat particularly was not the wheat that was being grown before in our country that was a gmo was, wheat yeah that was a gmo wheat and it had higher amount of proteins specifically gluten hmm. and uh, we'll keep gluten for another topic yes so but actually to to our viewers just a small um, uh, insight is that after the 70s we indians actually started consuming a lot of gluten exactly okay so before that before that the gluten amount was very much minimum hmm. uh, the reason was high yield variety so uh, companies who owned the patent to those high yield variety of seeds they gained a lot of profit from them yes and uh, companies who who and sold for noted in areas like punjab is primarily a wheat eating population uh, rajasthan is a wheat eating population even northern majority of northern india let's say if you leave out kashmir uh, when you come down to eastern india it's primarily a, a rice eating population same thing with the mm. southern india however in these states there was a boom in the bread industry mm. that bread has to people have to wake up and have bread and the second thing that boomed was the biscuit industry if you see britannia's headquarters are in calcutta so biscuit industry grew leaps and bounds and they are obviously using maida and the third thing that grew was noodles noodles started yeah, right. growing when uh, we were kids pretty much that time maggi was like just taking its shape earlier it was just some yeah. uh, small people in uh, china town in calcutta who were producing for the whole country 
but then at that point of time the uh, noodles industry grew leaps and bounds and then you had nestle uh, nissin foods i think top ramen entering in the 90s yeah. and they took it to the next level uh, another thing which i found very interesting about the um, uh, study the um, it puts all carbohydrates in the same category and that is a huge problem like mm-hmm. they are not really concerned about what are complex carbohydrates whether let's say yeah, eating right. bread is the same as uh, eating brown rice or neck pounded rice head hand pounded rice whatever you call it or even the roti that you see now is made from wheat mm-hmm. which is very fine so it goes yeah. straight into our blood stream as opposed to earlier if you remember as far as i know when i was a kid we used to actually take the wheat to a chakki and they would crush it and <laughs> yes give it but that yes. that uh, vanished after the early 90s yeah they they actually removed the bran portion from them it has the bran portion actually the germ portion they actually yeah. it has great amount of vitamin uh, b complexes and uh, good fiber also yeah so the 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 whole logic behind removing of the germ was to make make the flour look more white because white color it it represented a luxury mm. in india yeah. so white bread and white chapatis so but but they actually forgot that we are extracting out all the uh, good things so they actually uh, see it's like refining refining a, a poison yes so they actually made it worse by by doing that already the the gmo seeds were doing their job uh, in mm-hmm. worsening the health of the common public but they actually removed the somewhat beneficial part of that and you see after two decades mm. after two decades the companies who used to you know take off the brand and now they are launching their new products this is whole wheat uh, flour Or, yeah. or you can add extra uh, bran or extra germ into your flour. So buy our extra, extra, extra product germ. with that also. But at the same so, time, like especially if you see the whole wheat bread, like Britannia has this hundred percent whole wheat bread, and you'll see a bunch of stabilizers, acid refiners, acidity regulators, all these things added. Mm-hmm. So uh, coming back to the study, uh, I believe historically our country was always a high carbohydrate eating country. but historically we did a lot more physical labor people used to walk a lot more people used to work in the fields if they didn't work in the fields also they had to walk great distances just to yes. travel so the uh, back then even uh, with a high carbohydrate diet even though that was high uh, complex carbohydrate uh, things were normal but at the same time uh, with our sedentary lifestyle one of the things that we need to be doing is eat more vegetables which hmm. has not exactly even if you see the vegetarian diets i have observed a lot of vegetarian diets in india they don't eat a lot of vegetables they say it's vegetarian but it's like somebody eating roti four rotis with a katori of dal that is exactly. not at all uh, productive uh see the the deficiency the reason behind the deficiencies that our common public is having i if we take into notice i guess 99% of the people they will be deficient in either vitamins or minerals the reason behind that is we are not consuming enough vegetables and uh, fruits our sole focus is on rice or wheat yeah so i have noticed this trend and even was see couple of years ago when even i didn't have much knowledge about it that that was something of a my own life criteria also mm. having mm. four chapatis with one big ball of dal yeah but as soon as i started to learn that actually the grains and cereal group they are not they are only high in carbohydrates yes but the protein content is not there the fiber content is not there no and the vitamin content is also low then i switched to eating equal numbers of chapati with equal numbers of uh, equal number of bowls of dal or sabzi yes so and especially i think 
everybody, all of our viewers, it's uh, our recommendation. I'm sure Kanwadi will also agree that every day try to have a little bit of raw vegetables, like a salad, like consisting of carrots, yes. beets, anything, anything that you anything. can eat raw. Make make a simple salad, just salt and lemon. A little bit of black pepper would do. You don't need to be fancy with the right. salad dressings, especially avoid salad dressings if you if you can't make them at home. Uh, yes. But have some raw fruits and uh, veggies, especially veggies. Now, I personally do not believe in combining f uh, fruits and veggies, but that is something we should discuss another time. Uh, coming back to this diet, mm, what about the facts and what are the myths regarding facts that we want our viewers to know? Because I still find a lot of people are very panicky about fats. The moment you mention egg yolk, ghee, they they start losing their mind. They think that they are getting a heart exactly. attack next second. Exactly. See, and this is a common trait. Either the person is sick or not. Uh, even if we are talking about someone that has come, in, come into a hospital or in just, you know, as your friend or something. Even the gym goers, yeah. okay, even they are so much scared of fats. And sometimes, you know, it, it feels like, you know, just bang your head in the wall. I mean, why are they not trying to understand the point. Um, I was delivering a lecture and I asked uh, the students of the university, I said, why do we need carbohydrates? And they said, for energy. I said, okay, you are right. I said, why do we need fats? And there was a silence in the hall. And uh, I said, why do we need proteins? And they said, we need them to build our uh, muscles and tissues and cells. And I said, you, most of you are science students. So, what is an animal cell cell wall basically made up of? And the answer was phospholipid. And what I is said, a lipid? What are lipids? Exactly. I said, what are lipids? So, and then everybody started laughing. And then they actually realized that where they went wrong. Hmm. And, it, and it's totally not their fault. We all have read, most of the science students, we all have read that animal cell wall that is made up of phospholipids. But... Have we ever considered that from where are we getting those exactly. phospholipids? Those lipids are coming from our diet. If we are not getting enough lipids from our diet, our body will go into a cannibalism mode. Exactly. All the cells that die, our body will try to scavenge on it and take up as much as uh, the amount of nutrition that is left in the cell. But by the time, day by day, your nutritional level will go on decreasing. And not only that, if you see, like, uh, I have observed this among many people who are in the early 20s, 30s, even if they are not drinking alcohol, they are going to gym regularly. They have terrible skin. And they are like, what skin products can we use? I'm like, have you considered eating a little more fat, maybe? <laughs> you have wrinkles on the skin. It's because exactly. your body is not getting enough fat. The face, exactly. the face, the skin, everything needs fat. And the best sources of fat are plant fats, olive oil, coconut oil, mustard oil, then yes, um, almonds. Desi what, ghee, our, our, desi our ghee. very own desi ghee. Yeah. So I, I just recommend a no, simple I, I test. Just, uh, I mentioned the plant fats first because plant fats is something everybody okay, can okay, eat. Huh. If, yes, right, if right, somebody right. is vegan and they don't want to eat desi ghee, then they have these options. They have to increase that yeah. quantity. They have to take yes, a little olive. bit more olive oil. They have to take a little bit more olive oil. oil. All these they have to take. Olive, olive oil is one of the best things. You know, it is my go-to fats when it comes to, you know, uh, ready-to-eat fats, to be honest. See, I can just drink a, a, a cup, half cup full of uh, olive oil anytime. Okay. It is just, it is so soothing to your system. It is so good for your health. Now, in terms of, see, I, I recommend for people... Uh, who are actually, you know, having dry skin, your your advice is actually right. So this is what I actually used to do is I just, just take out your arm and scratch your arm. Yeah. And you'll get to know if you are getting a scratch and uh, that means your, your skin is not moistened enough. Yeah. So you have two options. Either use a moisturizer that is made up of chemicals. Exactly. And uh, all, all the nasty stuff. Or number two, get some more oil in your diet. Yes. It's as simple as that. So now when we were talking about the, the food pyramid, we said that the grains, the 
exponential amount of grains that we have that gave a rise to this industry that processed food mm -hmm. a similar thing also happened with oils and fats also exactly these these margarine and uh, see don't eat butter you can eat this uh, margarine that is cholesterol free and this is this and this is that and uh, in 1920s it was the first time when um, grains were actually seeds and grains were actually used to make refined oil yes so later on the trend caught up and uh, i was just taking uh, some notes on uh, refined oils and uh, I, i was going through whole process and they said you take it either uh, the canola seed or the soy seed or the cotton seed so during the first turning when they extract the oil by mechanical breaking down of the seed they get about 60% of the oil okay and see no uh, no company uh, who is you know making refined oil will keep a waste of that 40% they will try their best to get that 40% back from the uh, from the seed cake that is after the first mechanical extraction yeah so they use all sort of chemicals and uh, all sorts of acids and chemicals foaming and agents. then they use a lot of foaming agents yes to extract the rest of the 40% oil also and what they do later is they mix up both the batches mm. the one one that we call the virgin uh, oil which was the first mechanical extraction and the rest that came from the chemical extraction they basically what they do is they mix it all together so oil is one of the industries this uh, multinational corporations have done an amazing hit job you go to any nook and corner of the country you will not find anybody cooking in cold pressed oils i have seen a hmm. uh, few shops in um, amritsar right we use only pure desi ghee you see one or two shops here and there in delhi uh, in calcutta etc but that is like very very there it's like less than 1% of the shops who do that mm -hmm. and even then i have some uh, doubts because uh, they might be cooking in um, refined oil and adding a little bit of ghee in the end yeah right because they are not making it in front of us so we will never know and they are under tremendous pressure to cut the margins because indian consumers don't want to pay more and in exactly. that, in, in this market there has been like a, a complete wipe out of any type of oils we had so the native indian oils were groundnut oil which was used primarily in maharashtra uh, huh. punjab kashmir west bengal uh, and assam they all used mustard oil and mustard. in the in the south the two most common oils were sesame seed oil and coconut oil coconut oil coconut oil survived coconut oil industry survived somehow but the thing is coconut oil is limited consumption to a few coastal areas now it's gaining more and more popularity yes sir right. and uh, and the the reason it is getting popularity is all thanks to especially those people who done extensive amount of research and who have fought this idea hmm. uh, that saturated fats uh, are not bad and are actually important for you because hmm. a lot of controversy and a lot of uh, uh, ill advice was given about saturated fats uh, that included butter that included wheat the same amount of advice was also against coconut oil last year the american heart association actually uh, Uh, wrote a, again wrote an article which labeled coconut oil as poisonous yes yes so like still they are trying to start <laughs> maybe some lobby un log ko pakad ke bola hoga ki ay paisa sab chala ja raha hai come up with something create a <laughs> scare because if you have read recently i think this was this year one article came up that skipping breakfast is harmful to health which is an absolute misinformation yes right because they suddenly realize that all of a sudden people are not doing fasting for religious reasons people are doing fasting as a lifestyle to get benefits out of it exactly so yes. that that is another thing the food pyramid misled us on that you got to constantly keep eating you got to have a meal in which it is going to be 50% carbs it's going to be 10% fats is going to be the rest is going to be protein and uh, vegetables so they misled us and 
they came up with that concept of four meals a day, three meals a day, which was right. simply against human nature. So we have exactly. gone against human nature uh, in several steps. Exactly. When when the when the first time the Spanish colonies they they went to America, uh, United States of America before uh, the whole formation of the nation, and they met the Red Indians, then uh, there was one specific uh, thing that they told them. They said, "You uh, you Native Americans don't even know how to eat food. You should actually have three proper meals. That is breakfast, lunch, and dinner." And I was wondering, I was wondering. uh maybe this is the same thing that happened with the indians also yeah it did because uh, see i don't know whether indians ate it's there, there are conflicting uh, yeah that evidences. that is uh. so the thing is a lot of these ancient texts were written in sanskrit and very few people can read the sanskrit of that time the sanskrit you see today is not the same so back then hmm. some people uh, interpreted as when the sun uh, is at its peak you should be eating so that is somewhere between 10 to 2 you should be eating yes. because it helps your digestive fire the most that was the traditional indian wisdom hmm. so whether people ate breakfast or not there are conflicting reports there are conflicting reports but it was not a mandatory uh, thing and exactly. one thing is certain people did not eat at night people did not eat after 6 pm that tradition did not exist in india exactly and and still uh, uh, sometimes like i visit my relatives they live in a village and hmm. there is still a trend they they have their dinner at 7 7:30 or 8 and then they go to bed at 9:30 yeah whereas where i live in the city and we have this trend of you know waiting up till 10 or 10:30 or sometimes up to 11 pm in the night and eating our dinner late and then you know waking up like owls up to 1 in the night yeah so, so obviously when when your whole uh, you are you know sometime you are aligning your body opposite to what the day and night system of the nature is <laughs> see someone can maybe do it in in terms of like uh, uh, say under some certain conditions so, suppose someone is a night worker yeah someone works at night so for him that is okay but for someone that works in a day and sleeps at night so uh, there were many great things that the ancient indian wise people advised but uh, somewhat we came into this whole point where we started taking advice from the west Hmm. and trying to adopt their lifestyle and uh, everything yeah so now let us get to the point in which what would be our recommendations in terms hmm. of uh, now we have debunked most of the part of the food pyramid now going forward what like do we get rid of the food pyramid or do we come up with uh, something as an alternative or do we not need it at all what are your thoughts on that uh basically i suggest in two different modes first is the people who are not having you know a much of a physical workout throughout their day so yeah. that includes all the office going people who do not work out okay that includes me also people with sedentary lifestyle mm. okay the second option is for people who are either having some hard work mm. or are going to the gym or something like ठीक है तो द वन एंड ओनली मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन बोथ द ग्रुप्स विल बी टोटल कंजम्पशन ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स विल बी मोस्टली इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट ओके सो रादर देन गोइंग फॉर अ व्हीट रोटी अलोन यू कैन फोर्टिफाई योर फ्लोर यू कैन ऐड सम ज्वार और यू कैन ऐड सम मिलेट्स और बाजरा इनटू इट सम कॉम्प्लेक्स कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स इनटू इट रादर देन हैविंग व्हाइट राइस यू कैन हैव ब्राउन राइस So I Actually, suggest at least there is hundred and ten varieties of rice. I encourage people always to look for the regional rice. So in Karnataka, I have seen there are many different types of rice which many people haven't heard of, like Rajmuni rice. You have, and mm-hmm. then in Orissa, uh, the tribal societies they sell a lot of uh, rice. They call one of them leg powdered rice. It's slightly reddish in color, very similar to the Kerala red rice, but uh, it is not parboiled. 
So every region has a different variety of rice. And I always suggest people that whatever region you're coming from, if you are a rice eater, try to find out what your grandparents ate, what the exactly. village people still eat. And that probably is more nutritious than what you get in the store. The, the unpolished thing is... Unpolished for rice the is, is the bottom line exactly. what we should be going for. To put go, in very simple yeah, go, words. Go for the rice or go for the grain that has not been processed or polished. Okay. So that should be your, your go-to selection point. That should be your pinpoint where, where you decide that this is what I'm going to eat. It should be unpolished. And uh, now we were talking about the two groups. So the group that is hardworking or going to the gym eats some more complex carbohydrates. So I suggest at least three servings, three to four servings in a day of complex carbohydrates followed by two to three servings or two servings of pulses or lentils mm -hmm. and at least five servings of vegetables. Yes. Okay. Now you can accompany that with at least about 300 ml of milk if you want or two eggs. If you are not an egg eater, you can have a little bit of paneer. If you are a total vegan, then uh, your options are actually very much limited. Mm -hmm. Now, and, uh, in terms of those who are working out, many of them are opting for keto diets and intermittent fasting these days. Uh, my question is for them, how important is protein? Now, when I was uh, studying historical diets of people who did extreme physical activities, whether it was the Roman gladiators uh, ancient Indian warriors, Greek marathon runners, all of yeah. them had a vegetarian diet. As in, I won't say 100% vegetarian, but they eat meat like once a quarter, half a year, very rarely. They ate more carbohydrates for energy and they were definitely muscular and extremely strong. Yes. So much stronger than any uh, gym goer exactly. these days. Mo modern, modern day gym goers, yes, exactly. So, uh, see, when, when now it comes to nuts, I suggest a handful of nuts for both type of people, either living sedentary life or working uh, heavy workers. Yeah. Last comes with the fat. For someone who does not have any illness or anything like that, who is, you know, a fit and fine state, who can easily digest fat, I suggest at least eight spoons of fat. That is a minimum mark. Yeah. And the only recommendation that changes from for the people that are in sedentary, we will consume less carbohydrates. That is, we will either have maybe one or two servings of grains or cereals exactly. in a day. Exactly. And followed by two to three servings of pulses and lentils. And again, the, the amount of vegetables and fruit will be the same. Fruit should be one serving at least. And vegetables should be at least four to five servings. So we have a question here by Ali. He has asked an interesting question. Why can't we have some isolate protein with it? So he's asking whether we can incorporate isolate protein in the diet. I believe Ali is a gym goer. So what would you recommend for him? Is iso protein necessary or it is not necessary? In my opinion, it is not necessary. So yes, exactly. uh, even if you are a gym goer, you do not require isoprotein unless uh, you are not able to. Is there like a threshold limit that they must uh, have beyond the average adult requirement? Is there like a threshold limit that this much protein is mandatory for somebody going to the gym? Uh, see, the, the basically, again, the protein issue is exaggerated. Okay. Yeah. They actually want you to think that you need more protein. Exactly. It, it doesn't mean that you don't need protein. That is not my point. We need protein. And we yes, need protein, uh, but we don't need it like 2 grams per... Huh. Uh, we we don't need any something. extra protein. Now, to answer that question, the brother has asked the... You are having maybe one scoop of isolate. Okay. So, that will give you around maybe 25 grams of protein. Same amount of protein can be uh, eaten in 110 or 120 grams of uh, chicken also. Yes. 
And Ali, just to uh, going back, if you had checked our previous uh, live video which we did on proteins, one of the points I had raised is um, a survey in United States recently found over 80% of the supplements were contaminated with heavy metals. So remember, exactly. everything comes at a cost. And very few of them pass the heavy metal limit certification. Now you are in India where the there is literally nothing like the as strict as the USDA or FDA to monitor what kind of protein you are uh, coming up. And I'm pretty sure you're not sending the samples to a spectrometry lab where they will give you how much cadmium, how much lead, how much mercury that right. have been found in the protein. So take protein only, isoprotein or whey protein, anything as a last resort. If you're not last able resort. to make it from your diet. Exactly. So like see, see if you are if you are a gym goer and you weigh 60 kg, roughly we can estimate that you need about 50, 55 grams of protein. So you can easily manage that amount of protein. It is not a big deal. Yes, if you are a strict vegetarian and you do not eat eggs or chicken, then it might get a little tricky for you. Okay. They might have so to increase you... their uh, paneer or uh, yeah, the exactly. of so, the heat. Exactly. So it will be a little tricky, but it is not impossible. Yes. Because I personally, uh, when I was on a plant-based diet, I used to have about 70 plus grams of protein all on a vegetarian diet. So this excludes uh, milk products? Yeah, uh, except the milk products. Because the only, because the majority of the food that I ate, it was from pulses and lentils group. Yeah. And I was having about 1800 to 2000 calories. So easily I was getting enough protein, but Still that 70, 60, 70 grams of protein that was not sufficient for my body because my requirement is about uh, 90 to 100 grams. Yeah. And one of the things that I want to address because I came across this in one of the insurance company websites, at the bottom of the pyramid, they had come with the exercise daily recommendation. Now, regarding this, let me tell you the reason why many people uh, tell you to exercise daily is... Uh, they think that you are consuming a certain amount of calories and you need to burn it off and the calories will simply go away. There is no way to measure your output calorie. How much calorie is being burned while you are thinking, while you are digesting, while your body is generating heat. There is no way to measure them. Calories in and calories out are dependent on each other. They are not exactly. dependent variables that if you reduce calories in, the calories out will remain constant. Just think about it for a second. If you are used to spending, let's say 10,000 rupees a month and you are earning 20,000 rupees and you still have 10,000 savings. What happens when your earning goes from 20,000 to 2,000? Can you afford to spend 10,000? You'll be bankrupt on, in the streets in no point of time, in no time. Your body works like that. Your body is designed to preserve you. If you reduce the calories in, your body's metabolism will slow down. You will slow feel down. colder. Your calories yes. out will also slow down. And that is yes. one of the reasons why uh, people in the biggest loser study, which was a very famous show in US, where they had the best yes. nutritionists, best dietitians, best gym trainers, everything. They all, um, a lot of them regained the weight within a period of a year or two. Exactly. So I have, I have seen people like uh, if you want to lose weight, they, they, you know, they cut off your calories by, in a starting phase, they cut off your calories by 500. Yeah. So you lose weight for a couple of months and then you get stuck. Yeah. What they then do is reduce for the 300 calories from exactly. your system. So now because you are the, under the 1000 calories per day mark. Calorie, calorie deficit. So for, calorie for a deficit. long run, this is not healthy. And as soon as you are going to eat more than 1000 calories, even though it is healthy calories, but then your system will not be able to uh, manage it and it will start putting on weight even on healthy calories. Exactly. Exactly. Your body's set points get changed. And uh, this is something you should avoid. If you're trying to lose weight, do not cut your calories. Watch the foods that you're eating. Do not try to 
if you're doing intermittent fasting, that's a completely different thing because your body is undergoing a different process. But if you're not able to fast, do not try to suddenly reduce the amount you're taking in, hoping that you're going to lose weight. And exercise is a voluntary action. It has many benefits. There are plenty of benefits. You should do it. But remember, you cannot burn your calories off. Exercise is not a absolute mandatory thing without which you cannot survive. Uh, one thing also, I was going through all these food pyramids and I stumbled upon Dr. Stephen Gundry's food pyramid. Yeah, Stephen Gundry's food pyramid. It's an interesting one. It is, it is so, I, I was so, like, I was so happy to see that guy. He managed, like, I'm not 100% agreeing with everything that Dr. Yeah, because Gundry he is right completely now. against whole grains, even the good ones. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not totally agreeing with whatever he said, but one most beautiful thing that caught my attention in Dr. Gundry's food pyramid is, he just below, at the second last step, he has don't, kept fasting. Don't eat anything. Don't eat anything. Exactly. That is the best advice that if you are not hungry, do not eat. You do not need to, uh, need to have five or six meals a day. Stick to the three meal or two meal or whatever fits you the best. Yeah. So that was one thing that actually, uh, you know, I didn't found in any other food pyramid. That was an excellent advice by Dr. Gun. Yes, that I have to agree with. One meal a day, you should skip. Don't be eating multiple times. Humans are not cows. Cows are designed to graze uh, throughout the day. Humans are not designed to graze throughout the day. Our ancestors would go several days without food, then would eat a meal, and then again go several days without food. And they, they, they were just fine. We, I'll tell you a normal stat. A marathon runner has 5 to 11% body fat. Yes. If a marathon runner doesn't eat anything with that low fat, it, he, can, he or she can survive one whole month if they don't eat anything. And marathon runners have one of the lowest body fat percentages in the whole world. Yes. Uh, one another point I want to add for the viewers is, like we were, we were talking about uh, having, a, having a capping on your uh, cereal intake, you know, cereal and grain intake. Yeah. So we should not exceed that particular limit if even if you are sedentary, then two servings and even if you are working hard or working in the gym, I keep it four servings. And we should at least have five servings of vegetables. Now, the viewers, we, uh, I want to make sure, I am not considering potato in vegetable. <laughs> that is something okay. Indian, Indian viewers <laughs> have to know that. Yeah, so I, I was almost, I forgot this point. I, I, uh, I had to mention it. So I just remembered, I said, you know, let's just uh, keep all the things aside. Potato, we are not considering potato in the vegetable group. So we are considering potato also in a cereal group because exactly. of the starchy nature of the food. So if you are eating a lot of potato, that doesn't mean you are having a lot of uh, vegetables. vegetable. Intake. Exactly. So because you are not going to get fiber. Yes, it is good in potassium. Yeah. It is good in potassium, but it is starchy and uh, the, those starches, they convert into sugars and those sugars convert into fats. And uh, if you are on a weight loss diet, you need to exclude potatoes thoroughly. And otherwise also, I suggest, see, potatoes have become uh, a very, you know, uh, basic ingredient in our Indian food, most yes. of the Indian cultures. So I suggest use potato in alternate days. No. Otherwise, what we are having? We are having potatoes almost every day. I personally so, have stopped potatoes so long ago that for me, <laughs> it's a, it's like a once every two month type of thing. So yeah, yeah. For, but but for someone normal, someone no, someone normal who's having a normal not, healthy uh, balance, used to. So reduce or add like one or two potatoes in your meal. Exactly. Like by one or two oh. potatoes, I don't mean one or two whole potatoes, one or two pieces. Yeah. So, like, even if we start the potato thing in an alternate day also, now, like one day we will cook without potato and the next day we will add potatoes. By the end of the month, you have already half your potato consumption. Exactly. The best As vegetables the... you can consume are watery vegetables. India is full of them. Turai ki sabji, tinda, loki. Yes. Uh, all these things you can consume as much as you want. Uh, Parwal also, yes. I'm not very I, fond of that. Bhindi. I, I advise, 
I I advise my diabetic patients to avoid potato, and they and they are like, so uh, there won't be any variety in our sabzi. And I'm like, see, you have the ghee sabzi. Hmm. When ghee sabzi is cooked or loki is cooked, it actually looks like potato. Yeah. So I said rather than having cauliflower and potato sabzi, you add ghee to the cauliflower. See, this is a very good tip. Uh, those of you who love potato and want to get out of it, this is a very good tip. I actually this is a good learning for me also. I will try that because I usually use either make a loki ka sabzi or add the loki in the dal. Exactly. So rather than having carrot peas and potato, you start having carrot peas and loki. Yeah. So by that you will eliminate the potato also, and uh, there will be a variety in your vegetables. So it will also be soothing to your tongue and your eyes also. Yeah, and green leafy vegetables. Let me tell you, they are not a luxury. They are not something that you'll eat during winter. That is something you have to figure out how to eat on a regular basis. Green leafy vegetables are a must. spinach and methi are available in every nook and corner of the country yes right after that there are uh, seasonal uh, stuff of course during winter we get uh, sarso ka sag which is very good and uh, every region has some type of leafy vegetable like sorel amaranth gongura i think those who are in the south they'll be familiar with gongura and amaranth uh, the red colored um, leafy vegetable that i have almost seen everywhere in the country there's not a single place i have not seen amaranth so that is something uh, people should consume on a regular basis yes and just make sure that you wash them well and uh, yes. um, as advised earlier on the page that uh, use a little bit of baking soda to get rid of any uh, pesticides right. uh, that are there right so uh, one, yeah, go ahead one one more thing one more thing about the green leafy vegetables uh, if there is a viewer or someone in your know known that is having uh, any high potassium is issues yeah that is hyperkalemia so you guys need to restrict on the green leafy vegetables yeah so otherwise for a normal person if you are having a good renal function and your electrolytes are all balanced up you should be consuming green leafy vegetable also and, uh, uh, since uh, he brought this up another thing i want to mention those who have borderline thyroid or have thyroid issues cruciferous vegetables that's exactly. mean, that means uh, cabbage cauliflower uh, broccoli is the broccoli. anything brussels sprouts these things you cannot number one consume raw absolutely banned and in very moderate quantities cooked only maybe once or twice yes. a week those who have thyroid for them this is very important maybe we we will look into doing something very specific on thyroid at a later time so 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 what uh, so the, let's try to get this session to a conclusion what would be your concluding remarks in terms of the food pyramid uh see the food pyramid is in our brain it has been taught to our kids it been, it has been taught to when we were kids actually so it has a very huge impact on our brain but it is time to change and educate yourself okay we are not living in the 90s anymore hmm. okay so let's start you know the best thing the best advice i always give to is start knowing your food and start loving your food get into a relationship with your food exactly try to know try to know more about your food so uh, just avoid unnecessarily carb uh, high carbohydrate consumption and add more vegetables and more lentils to your diet and uh, protein should be an issue but it should not be an issue that you know it makes you so much hyper and you start buying products and all exactly and fats are your friend fats are your friends they are mandatory do not ignore them exactly do not ignore fats under any circumstances and this is especially for the vegetarians both meat eaters and vegetarians you both should know in the indian context potato and paneer ka sabzi is not a vegetarian diet you have to eat vegetables and fruits exactly. try to consume seasonal fruits do not try to consume exactly. fruits out of the season apple is available throughout the year that comes all the way from all corners of the earth it's not one of the healthiest yes. foods in the market 
you are much better off in the summer eating uh, mango don't worry about the diabetes of course that doesn't mean you are going to eat one box of mango in a day but mango in moderate quantities is safe for everybody yeah moderate moderate fruit yeah. fruit almost all, all the fruits, fruits are moderate should, yeah have fruits, have, have, fruits i again. don't advise fruit juice i don't know what's your uh, take on this i personally do not because of the fructose direct absorption in the blood fruit juice is fattening yeah yeah it the is the end of the conversation yeah. the only person who needs to drink fruit juice is the one who wants to gain weight exactly exactly if you are maintaining your weight if you are losing your weight stay away from food even if the box says it is sugar free or the box wala you should not even buy that packaged juice that you, you packaged might as well be drinking alcohol because both of them are the same they both exactly cause the exact it is the same disease alcohol causes one of fatty the same thing is fruit juice causes non alcoholic fatty liver disease one of the same it one of the same so uh, the the best thing is that have healthy fats do not go for these um, refined oils and uh, if you have a break of uh, neutral light or margarine any type of that type of a thing right now in your home just throw it in the dustbin that is poison in your fridge right now and go buy a proper uh, butter or you know make that makkhan in your home that or even better than butter butter is is somewhere in the moderate of fat he is a mandatory thing it's much better than exactly. butter it has short chain fatty acids and that is by far the best fat that you can use you can have it raw right. you can use it for cooking this is used from kashmir to kanyakumari from punjab to bengal everywhere there is exactly. not a single state in the country which doesn't use ghee so use ghee use cold pressed oils ditch the refined oil Re- ditching refined oil is important because they are outright cancerous and they are harmful for your body exactly so uh i believe that's it for today's session we had a good discussion and uh, stay tuned in future we will bring you more updates regarding health and nutrition sure. and how to make your life easier and not harder counting calories planning meals then that's all you will be doing instead of bothering about your health All right guys so have a good weekend take care we'll be seeing you soon so take care everybody if you have any question regarding nutrition you can uh, ask prateek on his um, rebel health and fitness page or you can uh, dm me on my erudite nutrition yes. page so and please follow both the pages help. please follow erudite nutrition please follow rebel health and fitness and share this video with your friends yes friends. thank you so much and 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 if you want if you have a specific topic in your mind that you want us to cover in the upcoming sessions please uh, do tell us about that also all right and uh, everybody have a great weekend and uh, i really enjoyed the session thank you so much prateek once again and uh, my pleasure my pleasure so we'll we'll see when when uh, we can keep we can schedule the next session sure. so it's always exciting to talk about uh, nutrition all right all right bro all right friends Good night that's it from us see you soon all right take care everybody take care